A little window that was up there that, you know, he could hardly see anything out of, he couldn't see anything out of, but he could get a better signal up there, and he would listen to Christian radio programs on the radio, and that together with the Bible began to transform him. One day, listening to the radio, he came across a program, Bible Answers Live with Doug Batchelor. And it was the program that just got his attention, and it was answering the questions he had in his in his heart. So he would be listening to the to the the uh, questions and answers, and looking at his Bible, and slowly but surely, it transformed his life. Wyatt Allen found that the Word of God changed his life. White sentence after 14 years in prison, 14 years, was reduced for good behavior. Why? Because the Bible had transformed his life. He walked out of penitentiary a free man. But freedom wasn't just from the iron bars he had been behind. It was from the life he had been living. And he wanted to do what he could to help other people. So Wyatt decided to go to Amazing Facts, where he had learned so much, and take their course at, them at their uh, Amazing Facts Training College Bible School and went through their program. And eventually, he says, I learned about Jesus and His love for me. What a Savior! And he finally, in 2014, after attending this Eventually, actually in 2015, he and his wife got married. You see them pictured here. Wyatt Allen became an evangelist with amazing facts. Can the Lord change a person? Yes. The Bible will change and transform us when the Spirit of God is working in us. That's why we need to study it together. You want to read his story? The least of the least is the story of Wyatt Allen. Why read the Bible? Because there's hidden treasure found there. Why read the Bible? Because it transforms the life of the individual. Our scripture reading was Psalm 119, verse 105. The lamp that lights our path is the Word of God. David wants us to know. There is light in the Bible to illuminate the darkness of this world. This statement says the scriptures need not be read by the dim light of tradition or human speculation. As well might we try to give light to the sun with a torch as to explain the scriptures by human tradition or imagination. God's holy word needs not the torchlight glimmer of, word of earth to make its glories distinguishable. It is light in itself, the glory of God revealed. And beside it, every other light is dim. You and I need light for this world in this dark place in which we are living today. In Ephesians chapter 5, Paul said, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. I told you the last time we were together that we were living in a time of emergency. It is an emergency because this world is evil and we need the light of this world. Paul also says the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Isaiah said to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. There are all kinds of controversies in Christianity today. And some of them within the Seventh-day Adventist Church as well. God's Word is under attack. And the direction that God wants His people to go is also under attack. And the reason is because people are not students of the Word of God. As the Ministerial Director for the Michigan Conference, my phone rings when people are really in trouble, or when churches are having a struggle, when pastors come face to face with false theology and they're not sure what to do. I'm telling you, there is a movement that doesn't understand the truth of the Godhead of the Bible, and it is, under, it is attacking from all different sources. 
My phone has been lighting up this week because there is a group that's going around telling us that we're under the shaking right now. And that the shaking is because we got the wrong idea about the Godhead. That comes from a lack of understanding of the Word of God today. Amen. You and I need to be in tune with the Bible or we will be deceived. Amen. I've talked to people who sat right where you are that were head elders in the church and they got caught up in this false theology and others like it because they were not students of the Word of God and they were not listening to what Jesus was trying to tell them. The devil is on the attack today. Amen. You and I cannot afford to be complacent. We need the light of the Bible shining on our lives. Amen. And it can't happen if we don't turn on the light. Amen. There is hidden treasure found there. That's why we read the Bible. It transforms the life of the individual. That's why we read the Bible. There is light there to illuminate the darkness of this world. That's why we read the Bible. We are deluded if we think that a casual and occasional reading of the Bible will prepare us for the challenging days that are right in front of us. I want to encourage you today to turn on the light and to study your Bible every day. I don't know what your excuses are. I'm going to give you ten very, very quickly. Very quickly. Some people say, I don't have time. We make time for what's important. Amen. Some people say, I don't know where to start. Having a Bible reading plan can help. I'll explain that in a minute. Reading makes me sleepy. Then get up and walk around. And then go back and read. Or read while you walk around. The Bible is too confusing. Maybe it's because we haven't been studying it. That's why it's confusing. If 15-year-old... Um, Wyatt Allen could begin to understand it. That's because the Spirit of God was working in his life, then that's what we need in our lives. I never get anything out of it. Again, it's something where we need to be by practice studying the Word of God, and it will be there. I've read through the Bible many times, and sometimes I go through it and say, that wasn't there the last time I read it, or yeah, it was there, but I just didn't catch it. We, need, we get something out of it all the time. There are too many contradictions in the Bible. The person who put this list together said, come talk to me if you find contradictions there and I'll show you that they aren't there. The Bible is boring? No, it's not. Can you tell me that the story of a man in the, uh, in the den of lions is a boring story? Or a, dream, a king having a dream that shows the history of the world is a boring story? And on and on and on I can go? No, it's only boring if we haven't learned to really read it. I might have to change. Uh-huh. That's the whole idea. That's what the Word of God is for. To change us. I forget or I get distracted. It's like falling asleep. You can do something to change that up. I'm not smart enough. No, you're right. You aren't. But the Spirit of God is. Amen. And He has promised that He will tell us the truth. By the way, if you want a good reading plan, there are lots of them out there. There is a book called The Discipleship Handbook. I believe you can get it from the ABC. It was, it's printed today by the GC. And in the back of that book is a terrific reading plan. And I really encourage you to use it. Um, I've used it for many years myself. And uh, I love that Bible reading plan that's there. If you want to know more about that, you can talk to me. In the book, Great Controversy, is this statement. It's the first and highest duty of every rational being to learn from the scriptures what is truth. And then to walk in the light and encourage others to follow his example. Why read the Bible? There is hidden treasure there. It transforms the life of the individual. There is light there to illuminate the darkness. And I want to close with this. I had a pastor friend. He's retired. He's almost 90 years old. As a matter of fact, he is 90. Just turned 90. He lives up in the town of Bessemer, Michigan. And recently he came down, we had just recently um, constructed a new conference office, reconstructed them. And he came down and he wanted this, uh, he had a picture he wanted us to hang there. And he wanted to come down and tell us the story, so he did. He brought this picture, you see it 
on the screen. I took a picture of it. And you can see the light streaming out of the windows there. See that? And um, this is the story of that particular painting. He said, Elder uh, Pastor, uh, Elder Pastor, Elder C. Ray Holmes in 1957 painted this picture. He said that he uh, painted this picture of the Marquette um, St. Mark's Lutheran Church. And the reason he painted this picture is because he had been wanting to be something else in life but had been drawn toward being a minister. And while he was at this church going to school, he preached his first sermon here and became a part of this church. He and his wife Shirley and were, uh, while they were students in uh, Northern Michigan University, um, and he painted this picture. And it hung in the entryway of that St. Mark's Lutheran Church for 59 years, until June 26, 2016, when they called him and said, we are closing our doors. We want to give you your picture of that. 59 years later. And he says that on July 31 of 2016, the light of that church went out. You have to understand that Pastor Holmes and his wife were both Lutherans at one time. Through the Word of God, their lives were changed as they came face to face with the Sabbath, and they had to make a decision and became Seventh-day Adventist Christians, and he eventually a Seventh-day Adventist minister and a professor at Andrews University. Retired now, you see him here in this picture as our retired president and our conference secretary accepted this picture that he gave. And this is the words that he spoke as he shared it. He said, let us determine that by the grace of God and empowered by the Holy Spirit together with unyielding faithfulness to the Scriptures, the light of the Seventh-day Adventist Church will never go out. Amen. He says about this picture, he says when he painted, he was painting those that light streaming out of that, but he failed to realize something until he got the picture back 59 years ago. And that is on the horizon. He had painted this picture that to him was an illustration of the brightness of the light of the Word of God and the return of Jesus that he had never understood when he was there as a young man. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Jesus is the light, and He's coming back again. Let's be students of the Word of God, and your light and our light will never go out. Amen. I'd like to encourage you to be a student of the Word of God, to be prepared when Jesus returns. Our closing hymn is a fitting one, entitled, Give Me the Bible.
renew your commitment to study the Bible. If you study it already every day, then renew your commitment today to keep studying the Bible. If you've fallen away from studying the Bible, then I encourage you to make a commitment today that you want to renew that connection with the Lord and study the Word because Jesus is coming again soon. And I know you want to be ready. You want to make that commitment today? Say, Lord, I want to be a student of your Word and I want to learn to know you better. I'm also going to ask you to do one other thing. Would you pray for these meetings that we're going to have next week? Please, please pray. Prayer changes things. And prayer changes people's lives. Let's bow our hands. Father in heaven, thank you so much for the Bible that you've given to us. We are so privileged as a people in this free country to have the Bible that we can study. Lord, we confess that we have gotten lazy at times and not been the students of the Bible we should be. I pray that you will renew our commitment today to be students daily of your word, that we will know Jesus there and be ready when he comes. As we go from this place, please go with us and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.